This is Barry Zalma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zalma on Insurance. Today we're going to speak about a very unusual thing, where a lawyer goes to the Supreme Court of the state of Georgia and seeks a voluntarily disbarment for fraud because he worked with the convicted murderer and fraudster Mr. Murdoch in South Carolina and had, by so doing, his entire law practice destroyed. Corey Hoverton Fleming asked for voluntary discipline by the Supreme Court of Georgia before the issuance of a formal complaint, which he expected to come at any time. In the petition, Fleming admitted that during his representation of a client in South Carolina, he violated multiple rules of the Georgia Rules of Professional Conduct, found in Bar Rule 4-102. As discipline, Fleming requested that the court accept the voluntary surrender of his license to practice law. In a case entitled The Matter of Corey Hoverton Fleming, the Supreme Court of Georgia on November 7, 2023, had been asked to accept Fleming's request that he be disbarred to avoid a trial since his guilt, in his opinion, was obvious. The State Bar filed a response stating that the Supreme Court should accept the petition. With regard to the conduct at issue, Fleming admitted that he was asked by R. Alexander Murdaugh, a lawyer then licensed in South Carolina to represent a woman injured at his property. The woman, who was a long-time employee of Murdaugh, died from her injuries, leaving two sons. Murdaugh had two insurance policies providing coverage for this type of incident, one providing $505,000 $505,000 in limits, and an excess providing an additional $5 million in coverage. At some point in 2018, Fleming apparently filed suit against Murdaugh, presumably on behalf of the woman's estate, and in November of 2018, the primary paid its policy limit to settle Fleming's client's claims against Murdaugh. Fleming did not inform his client about this fact. Instead, Fleming allowed a person named Westendorf to replace the son as the personal representative for the estate. Fleming admitted that the petition to the probate court detailed payments of $166,000 to his law firm for legal fees and an additional 11500 for prosecution expenses, and that those figures were misrepresentations and that there were no legitimate prosecution expenses. In March of 2019, a mediation with the excess insurer ultimately led to an additional settlement in Fleming's client's case that involved in a total payment by the excess of $3,800,000. Fleming admitted that the presentation to the court, uh, the probate court for acceptance of the settlement was false. After both settlements, Murdoch, a defendant in the lawsuit, requested that Fleming make the Net settlement proceeds check payable to Forge, apparently explaining that he had created structured settlement or annuity accounts for the woman's surviving sons with Michael E. Gunn of Forge Consulting, LLC. Murdaugh apparently converted the funds to his own benefit. In fact, that suit is still pending, but it should have been obvious to Mr. Fleming to give the defendant the settlement funds, but it was not, and he did so. Although it is clear the money was removed from the IOLTA account of Fleming and that it was not used for the purposes it was supposed to be used for, 
Fleming did not specify whether he retained the 26200 for his own benefit or passed some of the money to Murdaugh, as suggested by the bar's response to the petition. He did admit, however, that he agreed to hold monies in his firm's IOLTA account from the settlement that would be accessible to Murdaugh. Fleming claimed that from the time of the settlement until September of 2021, he was under the impression that Murdaugh, one of the defendants in the lawsuit, was handling the creation of structured settlement annuities with Forge Consulting for the benefit of the heirs of Fleming's client. He asserted that on September 3, 2021, however, he learned from one of Murdaugh's law partners that the firm had discovered that Murdaugh was stealing money from it by using a fictitious bank account in the name of Forge DBAR Murdaugh. Fleming then states that thereafter, he was informed that Forge Consulting did not have any accounts related to the matter and had never received the funds from either settlement. By this conduct, Fleming admitted that his failure to reasonably communicate with the personal representative of the woman's estate. Fleming stated that he had admitted facts sufficient to allow the imposition of discipline and offered to surrender his license as a way of streamlining this disciplinary process. The Supreme Court concluded that Fleming admitted conduct sufficient to establish violations of the rules of professional conduct, and that the underlying facts may well be more egregious than Fleming admitted. Regardless, the Supreme Court found no need to delve into those details because the conduct to which Fleming admitted was sufficient to establish the violations that Fleming's conduct was worse than he acknowledged because he admitted that he warranted the most serious sanction the Supreme Court can impose in a bar discipline manner, disbarment. It therefore ordered that the name of Corey Howerton Fleming be removed from the rolls of persons authorized to practice law in the state of Georgia. In my opinion, Mr. Fleming was easily manipulated by a serious criminal, Mr. Murdaugh, who was convicted of murder of his wife and son while trying to avoid prosecution for the theft of funds from his law firm and insurance fraud perpetrated on his professional liability insurers. He convinced Fleming to join in his crime and steal more than $4 million dollars from the estate of his late housekeeper, who, with the evidence of wrongdoing, overwhelmingly sought to save the money and time to defend a disbarment proceedings, voluntarily asked the court to remove his license. The sad destruction of lawyer Fleming, who trusted what he believed to be a prominent lawyer who turned out to be a murderer, thief, and insurance fraudster, should have been obvious to anyone who had learned anything in law school. But he was not, and the disbarment in both Georgia and the suspension in South Carolina, which will probably result in a disbarment, was well earned. This video was adapted from my blog, Selma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zelma.com slash blog. You can subscribe to the blog, and if you do, you'll receive notice of every blog posting, usually five, sometimes six a week, and access to the more than 4,650 blog postings. You can also subscribe to these videos on YouTube or Rumble.com. And if you do, I'd appreciate if you click on the like button on YouTube or the thumbs up button on Rumble.com. 
And if you're interested in receiving more detailed information about insurance, insurance law, insurance claims, and insurance fraud, please consider for a very small fee subscribing to my Substack publication or my Locals community. Thank you for your attention.